Yo guys, what's up man? Yeah, what's up? How you doing? Me? I'm doing great man. I am doing great. So as you can see from behind me, I've changed country, I've changed city and I've changed team. Well, that that this is no news because you all know that our spell at Aston Villa was coming to an end, and it did. And um, I've just signed a three-year deal with this massive club, with this massive club who has a massive history. I'm not gonna tell you what club I'm talking about, which club I'm talking about, but I'm just gonna give you some clues uh, in which country I landed. Clue number one. In this country, it rains 300 days a year, on average. Apart from other things, this country is well known for their single malt whiskies. In this country, men like to wear skirts. And the fourth clue is here, on my beanie. Let's go. Hey guys, it's JD and welcome back to my channel, but most importantly, welcome back to another episode of Rags to Riches, a football manager story. This is a brand new season with a brand new team in a brand new country. And yes, guys, we are in Glasgow, Scotland with our mighty Celtic. Yes, we've landed here in Glasgow, in Scotland, in beautiful Scotland managing one of the greatest teams if not the greatest team in scotland celtic now obviously I, I, i'm i'm gonna give you a few details about celtic and we all know how 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 big the history is how um, great the history is of these scottish giants uh basically they have won the european champions league in 1967 they were runners up in 1970 then they won the euro cup in 20, 20, 2003 scottish cup they won it 42 times guys <laughs> and 19 times runners up they won the scottish premiership 59 flipping times and they came second so runners up 34 times they won the Bedford cup 25 times and so on and so forth i'm gonna not i'm not gonna tell you everything guys because the, i mean the, the 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 trophy cabinet they have this massive huge hall full of silverware guys <laughs> amazing amazing i mean i'm so happy i think i've landed on my feet we took a pay cut that's not a problem um but it came out this job came out of flipping nowhere guys and i'll tell you all about it later on um but let's have a look so we are managing now celtic if we have a look at my contract um being a rex to riches i need to show you the contract so um basically we had a massive pay cut basically we're, we're now doing twenty five thousand a week um which is not bad i believe i mean how much does it come i don't know i i haven't done i haven't done my my maths but we were paid very good uh, at aston villa so taking a pay cut here it's not really that big of a problem because i don't think we're gonna stay here for long um and i'll also tell you why later on but yeah we are on twenty five thousand per week after tax so 25 net so basically a grand 100 grand a month um which is like 1.2 million take it or leave it net which is not which is not bad come on um compared to what we were earning at aston villa yes because we we're taking like one fourth 25 percent of what we were earning but i don't care man i don't care uh, our time at aston villa was over 
We've won the league. We've won twice the FA Cup, twice the Charity Shield. We've won the FA, no, the Euro Cup. And we went all the way to the final of the Champions League. So we needed fresh air now. We needed some fresh air. And we found it here in beautiful Scotland. Beautiful Glasgow. So let's start. Where do we start from? Okay, let's start from finances. So um, basically, we have 52.5 million in the bank. Zero transfer budget. And I'll tell you why. Um, we have 1.6 million as wage budget. And we are spending 1.5. So there's still room um for a bit of wage budget there uh this income this season was of 32.6 mil and expenditure uh, expenditure was of 17.8 mil um last season we ended up with minus 11 million in the bank like we lost 11 million this season at the moment we have 22 million uh, profit and loss this month was 14.8 million and i haven't sold any players guys just to let you know <laughs> just to let you know so before we go to the actual players and the transfer market let's have a look at the stuff so basically i i fired everyone and i got everyone new basically we have the best coaching team uh the best medical team and um you can say the best scouting team because this is the analysis data so i don't really use the analytic analysis data i i the, the the thing is that if, if you have good enough scouts that can um yet can find you talent that's all you need man that's all you need um we need we can engage another performance analyst which i will not um i sacked my loan manager i don't need a loan manager um and probably now i will sack my technical director and also my director of football but uh, <laughs> we have no doctors we have no doctors so um, the game doesn't let you um, doesn't let you hire doctors. So that's I'm, I'm sure some doctors will come in eventually. Um, but yeah, now let's have a look at the club vision, guys. Let's have a look at the club vision. I'm leaving the transfers for for for, for the end. Uh, I'll tell you why later. <laughs> okay so apart from the working with the wage budget within the working within the wage budget which is always there end of current season euro cup reached the first knockout round we're in the euro cup because last season we, we arrived we finished third guys um so we have to at least reach the first knockout stage which is past the group stage uh scottish premier challenge for the scottish premiership so th it's not uh set in stone that we need to win the scottish premiership we will probably will and that's my target anyway um scottish cup who reached the final bedford cup reached the final um and then in next year's next year's um, vision club vision we need to win the scottish premiership apart from that nothing nothing out of nothing wow so i think it's more than doable both winning the league um, qualifying for the latter stages of the Euro Cup but we have to see we'll have to see now let's go to the transfer so it was more of a loan market rather than a transfer market but we'll guide you through it I will guide you through it um, most of the players you know already <laughs> most of the players you know already so um, let's go now these players out it wasn't me so they were already um either there was already an agreement about them or um, they were done before i actually arrived to the club but i did some um some transfers myself these two wasn't me so adrian Kiss was here and simons was here now i got a few players in starting off javier vitali we got him on loan from man city he can play on the left he can play in the center and they also can play on the right uh in defense decent young 22 year old argentinian nothing wow but i think at this level i mean the scottish the scottish premiership is is, is not as big standard like it's not like the premiership or anything with all the respect there's always two teams which is which are celtic and rangers they always battle it out <laughs> between them and then there's there's the rest you know so i think it's 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 a good addition to the squad let's put it that way yes then we got in raymond beaten we got him in on loan from uh, arsenal he is a central midfielder who can play also as an attacking midfielder uh decent young 23 year old english player 17 in decisions 18 determinations agility and balance he has the pace he has the stamina 
he has the passing he has the work rate vision i mean this guy has it like first touch dribbling he has it all man so this guy would be will be one of our best um, players in the squad this season moving on we got nigel Duby from aston villa on loan the young central defender 21 year old this guy is decent man um i know that my my uh, relationship with him at aston villa wasn't wasn't the best but he wasn't he wasn't happy at aston villa because he wanted to go on loan um and now he's on loan with a manager that he knows well he knows well his tactics so he should be doing really good here why not i mean he has the numbers so and then he's not the only guy i got in from aston villa guys as you might have noticed already um next in line should be why the game is stalling i don't know next in line is lautaro farina our keeper at aston villa our reserve keeper at aston villa now i told you in the previous episodes that duven the the colombian keeper at aston villa signed a new contract so they ended up with two really good keepers and obviously the the, the choice was to loan out farina i asked for him they said okay decent De although he's considered a fringe player i think he's decent and he will do an excellent job for us guys i side in jorge tapia from aston villa well there is the rule there is this rule that i forgot about even in england there's this rule. you cannot loan more than two players from the same club right so initially i asked for him um christian farina and Duby for loan obviously Duby and uh, farina came in first and then i couldn't i couldn't loan tapia so what i did is i bought him without paying any money so basically um, i got him in for free now when he um gets 50 appearances for us in the league we will pay 20 million so i think it's good i mean 50 games that's two and a half maybe two seasons i think we're, we're, we will be fine um this guy is decent 16 in dribbling 16 in first touch 16 in heading i mean he did very well in america he did good for us in the last uh, in, in, the, in the last season the last half of the season so i think at this level he will be good next in line is christian guys christian from aston villa now they have put him on the transfer market i don't know why they transfer listed him um again i wanted him in, in for loan then i couldn't loan him in because i already loaned farina and Duby. so again i what i did was i got him in for free after 50 appearances we would pay like 30 million which is nothing bad not, not, nothing out of this world um so yeah i got him and he's decent man he can play on the left he can play as a, an attacker i know um, that he's a good player we haven't given him a lot of playing time at aston villa but he still developed quite decently so i think in this level at this level of football he will do extremely well then we got in rafael escondurra from atalanta actually for christian we paid 800k um rafael escondurra from atalanta he's a decent um central defender 20 years of age um he's an exciting young prospect with two and a half current ability potential of four he's not going to be a starter but he's adding depth to the team and last but not least he's the last one in honestly um we got this guy in from arsenal Lorenzo Gentile joins Celtic on loan from Arsenal. He's a 27-year-old midfielder. I think he's decent, man. Technique 17, teamwork 16, balance 16, anticipation 17. So I think he's decent. He can play both positions. Deep playing playmaker. He will be our deep playing playmaker. And I think he's decent. And these are the players I got in, guys. I still am looking for a fullback, for a right fullback and a left fullback. There is not a lot on the market. Um, so yeah my, my probably in the next few episodes i'm going to show you more more transfers so um let's have a look at the preseason so we had a good preseason basically we started off against saint Pauli, 1-5-3 then chavez 7-0 then we lost away to villa francese 3-4 then we went on a little tour to my to my home country malta we played vittoriosa 14-0 zaytun corinthians 9-0 Melita 14 nil, Santa Venera Alliance Lightnings 6 nil. Now, in today's episode, we're gonna kick it off, guys. We're gonna kick it off against Hibernian away. Which I believe it's still in Glasgow, Hibernian. No, Hibernian is in Edinburgh. Hips come from Edinburgh, yeah. Um, 
we're gonna kick it off in the Scottish Premier. Now, as I said, if we have a look at the competitions, we are in the Euro Cup. We still haven't. Uh, we still don't know against who we're playing. Um, there's two teams we can play, but obviously they have to still play the the, the early stages of of the Euro Cup qualifying. Um, we are in the playoffs, so one game and then we're in the group, the Scottish Cup and then the Bedford Cup. Um, Bedford Cup will face Inverness, um, Inverness Caledonian Thistle. That's what CT means, um, stands for. So yeah, four competitions, Scottish Premier, Scottish Cup, Bedford Cup and Euro Cup. Now, without further ado, guys, without further ado, let's do this. Let's kick it off. I'm so excited, man. I am so excited about this. Um, let's kick it off. Off we go. So. Uh, the tactic is the same as I used at Aston Villa, guys, by the way. Um, I changed nothing. Um, so, I'm going to put Schiller here. Christian instead. Our best attacker is this guy here, 22-year-old Doig. And uh, I've refused. Look, this guy, this guy, man, is a monster, man. Uh, Twenty-two years of age, like all half Europe wants him, basically. Um, FC Porto wants him. Espanyol wants it. Yep, he's a good player. Um, I'm expecting loads from him, guys. Loads. Um, so yeah, the problem now is uh, I don't have. So let me have a look at this. So Gentile comes in for Suarez. Uh, we have Vitali can play here. Males cannot play there I don't know why he is <laughs> um, yeah I, I have a big gap on uh, when it comes to full backs guys as you can see so uh, Bard will go here Doobie will take males place Gentile McAllister which is okay actually we can also play uh, Halilovic and Beaton I'm gonna put Beaton in for Halilovic Halilovic is our um, Halilovic is our vice captain guys by the way can't remember who the captain is though <laughs> I think it's Bard um who else who else who else i'm not sure about McAllister on the left guys to be honest actually let's put let's put males here i don't know the players yet <laughs> i don't know the players yet um yeah, let's go with let's go with this. Let's go with this formation. Why not? Let's test the newcomers and see how well will they perform. Now, I have to tell you the story, guys. So, um, after the last episode, I ran the game for like a week or two, and then there wasn't anything, guys. The only big team um, that was without the manager were Man City, right? So. And I, I didn't want to go to Man City, obviously. I couldn't go to Man City because the only rule there is in this journey, man, is that you cannot... I cannot go to a team in a country in which I already won the league. So we've just won the league with Aston Villa, so I couldn't go to Man City. So I resigned from, from Aston Villa. I resigned. And then jobs started coming in nothing wow well, no nothing no like the big teams like the big teams from the big the top four five um leagues in europe nothing 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 
So at one point, Man City, without me applying for the job, they asked me for an interview and I went. And right after the interview, like a few days after, they offered me a job, which I I didn't refuse. I delayed, to be honest, because I, I had to, to do something, right? Oh, my God. They've hit the bar there, but now beaten. Come on, buddy. Come on. Young beaten to Doig. Doig enters the box, leaves it to Bar, to Gentile. The newcomer, he shot, but the shot got saved. Um, let me just um, silence my phone because I forgot to do that. So yeah, then um, there was a job opening at Galatasaray in Turkey and I applied for it. McAllister, I was doubting him and he opens the score. The first guy who puts his name on this year's score sheet is McAllister. He was 33 years old and he's Argentinian McAllister. Um, so yeah, I applied for Galatasaray. Then Celtic came up and I applied for Celtic. In the meantime, Man City came back to me because the week has passed and I delayed it again. Um, Galatasaray offered me an interview and then offered me the job. Celtic offered me an interview and then offered me a job. Then there was um, a job opening in Italy with Hellas Verona. And I said, ooh, ooh actually they, were, they came ninth last season. So I said, ooh, this is enticing, man. This is enticing. Um, so, I, so I applied, right? And um, but they never got back to me. They never got back to me. So I said, OK, then um, I refused Man City. I refused Galatasaray. Uh, the choice was automatic, guys, between Galatasaray and Celtic. I, 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 I chose Celtic even because I have special ties with Scotland. And because um, I've been to Scotland like what? Nearly 20 times now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and uh yeah i have family there because my wife my wife's family are from scotland so so yeah I, it, it's my and i think that scotland is the most beautiful country i've ever visited and um so yeah the the choice was automatic now obviously we landed on both feet here christian with his first goal we land on both feet here because um, we are in a good club, like fi stable financially, good reputation. We can uh, have a go at the Euro Cup. The, the chances of winning the league are, are like high. Media prediction, by the way, gives us first. And what we have to do, keep on winning here at Celtic until something better crops up, like I don't know, one of the European giants, I don't know, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund, Bayern, Munich, PSG, whatever, you know. Um, but in the meantime here, we don't really have to struggle to win, I believe. So I think we've landed um, on both our feet, which is excellent, which is good. The pay isn't extremely good, but still 1.2 million, yes. I <laughs> Who would refuse a 1.2 million salary net? So anyway, in the meantime, we're winning 2-0. The Doig hasn't scored yet, but he wins us a corner. Doig is our penalty taker, by the way. Gentile, the newcomer, is playing well, 7.1. Uh, Beaten, the newcomer, is playing well, 7.1. Vitali, the newcomer, is playing well on 6.8. <clears throat> Uh, Duby 6.8 and we're not doing bad we're not Christian 7.3 and a goal we're not doing bad man um, so I'm gonna say I'm very pleased and off we go I'm gonna see who I can like sub here let's put Amion instead of Bard uh, Duby you know what? I'm going to leave Doobie there. Why not? He's young. He can do it. Um, for the rest, I'm going to leave everything as is, man. No, 
Dubi has to go out. <laughs> Uh, let's put uh, there's, a, there's a new guy as well Andriana Kiss later on guys uh, before this episode ends we will check the transfers um, Aston Villa did just to be just to have fun you know just to see I don't know the guy I don't know who they actually got as a manager oh Almost in, man. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Beaten. We need to change beaten, and we put in our vice captain Halilovic. Come on, a good start. Two nil away at hips. Not bad, I guess. Halilovic just came in gives it to Gentile Gentile to males back to Gentile Halilovic come on lovely opening from Doig Amwan crosses it in they clear it and now Cox acres of space on the right hand side for Cox he's almost into the box he avoids that horrendous tackle he avoids it I mean, if <laughs> it's a pen, man, <laughs> no argue about that. It's a pen. Come on, Farina. Ooh, almost, almost, almost. Now we have to. I'm taking it lightly here, but it's only two one, guys. So we need to demand more from the lads. Almost, Farina. Ugh. It was a millisecond away. A millisecond too late. No, I think we've done our three substitutions. Yeah, so Gentile has to suck it up. 8-1 minutes, come on. Gentile, back to Vitali. We haven't seen the facilities, guys. I just I just remembered now that I haven't showed you the facilities. Um, Agu. We're going to fuck it up, man. And they fucking score. They did nothing, nothing <coughs> during the first 70 minutes of this game. Ah, oh, come on, man. Watch it, we're going to lose it now. Watch this, we're gonna lose this game. Come on, Farina. Come on, man. <laughs> now, obviously, the players are, are tired. All the substitutions has been done. There's six minutes left on the clock. And hips are on the attack. Can we counter though with Christian? Christian, he can run. We know he can run. Christian enters the box. He shoots and Christian with a bang. A brace on his debut. A brace on his debut. Come on. What a break. What a counter attack, man. And look at Christian. <laughs> he put on fifth gear, top gear and boom. No one could cope with him. So let's praise them. Uh, did it have to come to this? Like we score in the 91st minute after we were 2-0 two, two up and dominated the whole flipping game. Anyway, <laughs> good or bad, we won it. <laughs> we won our first game here at Celtic. Um, let's tell them it was a good ball. It was a good win. Well, I'm not gonna go in confrontation just as yet with the boys. Um, so yeah, a good start, I guess. A good start now i have to show you two things the facilities and then we have a look at aston villa so let's have a look at the facilities okay so here we are in the facilities screen guys so we have a 60,411 all-seater stadium obviously it's celtic park beautiful stadium i've been in it 
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stadium. Um, the, the stadium is owned by the club, so that's a good thing. Uh, stadium condition is very good. It has under soil heating, no roof, surfaces, grass and synthetic mix. Um, but what really interests us, interest, interest us is the good corporate facilities, super training facilities, great youth facilities. We have a 15-year stadium sponsorship deal at 2.04 million per season ends in 2039. We will not be here by then. Then we have a reserve stadium. Our reserve team plays at Keplio Park in, Green, in Greenock. The youth, the youth play in Lennox Town, Glasgow, and the training ground is in Lennox Town. Lennox Town, Glasgow, good academy coaching, exceptional youth recruitment. And this is good. Exceptional youth recruitment and great youth facilities means great prospects, great young lads that join the club, great great prospects for the future, which is extremely good. Extremely, extremely good. Now let's have a look at Arsenal, at Aston Villa. I don't know why I keep saying Arsenal, guys. <laughs> um, let's have a look at their transfer. at what they did within the transfer now of course they 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 lost four players because we took them they didn't sell much guys they didn't sell much they just uh, sold actually mariano almenara left on a free tapia and christian are left forever basically and uh, dubi and farina will eventually go back um, they only got this bloke here brandau on a free 22 year old Portuguese keeper obviously it's a third choice keeper but they kept all their good players they kept Arce, they kept Clements, they kept all the defenders um, they kept Marco Avellino, Otavio Aldo, Tenaglia, Daido Arial, which is good which is good um, let me just who is the manager now? Senior squad Eric Tanag who is this guy? A uh, 62 year old Dutch. Let's have a look at his history. He was at FC Twente, never won a shit in his life. <laughs> he landed on both feet, man. This guy landed on both feet. Anyway, let's have a look at our own schedule now. Now, probably I will come back. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe for a Euro Cup game. Obviously, I'm not going to show you the playoff because we're going to play either Dynamo Zagreb or Varazdin, which I think it's, it's it's doable, very doable. So probably once the once the group stage is on, probably I'll come around here and I'll show Rangers and um, and the game from the Euro Cup. Until then. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you are excited as much as I am with this new job. And if you like this episode and if you're liking this series, don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. My name is Jerry D. And until next time, stay safe. And aye aye.